Hello class, this is just a uh, quick kind of uh, follow-up on our um, exercise last week with regards to the curtain wall. Um, as we went through the exercise, the area that we focused on was on this north elevation. Um, once you understand how to do this, you should be able to carry it around to both sides of this two-story space and then also start to add the curtain wall to these other dashed locations. One of the things that um, we talked about in the elevations, and this was the main one we're focusing on, so we'll go through that exercise here, uh, just continue where we were left off on Friday, and then of course you would be able to do the same exercise over here for the this retail space and then also the front entry. Uh, one of the things that I had kind of mentioned in class, and here's a photograph that I took uh, just to let you know that you know it isn't built the way it's shown here. Some of you have decided to kind of build it this way. That is fine because I know that you'll be modifying this later. If you want to keep it simple you can actually just do this uh, full curtain wall um, option and then there again just remember sure that you're dividing up the bays so that you get the uh, equal spacing. Now we had looked at sheet A6.2 to get the dimensions of this elevation and of course locate that door. Uh, we had identified that door and the details that were associated with it plus the details for the kind of uh, bottom here so we can understand what those millions are. So we have 22 equal bays um, and that's an 89 feet. This is um, you know kind of called out up here at the top. As we go through the math on this, we did 48.5455 inches, and that should give you uh, nice uniform spacing across there to match what is here. We also looked on sheet 8.3 to get some of the dimension stuff, and we also have some corner column details that we'll have to build and add later. And in here, we were able to identify the one inch insulated glass unit uh, that is a part of this and then that it's an 8 inch deep mullion that uh, we are referencing the inside face of the glass 1 inch and then of course we have a 1 inch cap that will be on the outside of that and this affects of course how we lay that uh, mullion system inside the glass and so here's some shots of that as you can see the kind of glass comes down uh, it's a two and a half inch mullion grid uh, where it turns corners. Uh, we have some column conditions that we will make for that. And as we can see, there's an insulated column condition there also. So back here to the Revit model, I've got it here in 3D view. And so this is we, the exercise we had went through. Uh, I was going to recommend everybody kind of looking at the north elevation. Uh, if you are having problems, make sure that your elevations are showing existing, because if they don't, um, if you will, you might have some problems with the way they're viewing. So, for instance, if this was set up and saying new construction, you're going to get kind of a blank wall. And so everything that I've drawn, of course, in existing will disappear. So I'll just give you a, a plane. So we go back to existing, and now I have what I need. Now I have put the mullions in. Um, you can see here one of the things that I'm doing um, so if I as you go up here to the architecture wall as I'm continuing to add grids it will reference off the center line of the previous one. So there again place your grid and you need to come in here and modify that dimension And you'll continue that all the way down this elevation. And then once you do that, uh, you get those grids in. Then you can come in here with the million. And of course, I've already made the, I clicked the 2.5 by 5 inch rectangular million. And I modified it. I duplicated it, as we've been doing with some of our wall types. You can see here, I got the, and I made it a, 8 inch deep so when I went to edit type the um, some of the things I did is I made sure the thickness was 
8 inches. Of course, it's kind of equally spaced on both sides, so it's an one and a quarter on both sides. It's an aluminum material, so that's good. Uh, we could actually go in and we can make it uh, <coughs> anodized aluminum bronze if, um, if you wanted to. Let's see. As you can see, all the different aluminum, so I would just have to scroll until I find what I want. So here I finally found the anodized bronze, and I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to apply. Now the other thing is that since it's 8 inches deep, it's going to want to set it perfectly inside the mullion. Now we know that this has actually got uh, where it's referencing to um, that center face, it's actually two inches out and two inches, and f um, six inches in. So I know that if it's in the middle, it's at four. So I want to pull it back in towards the building um, two inches so that the uh, reference lines and everything are tied off to the inside face where we located the window. And by doing that, I now have um, this lined up. So if I say OK, now one of the things some of you may have clicked down here at the bottom I'm showing here with hidden line if you did shaded it'll actually give you colors if you want to see what was glazed. Um, I also could do realistic since these are bronze and now these will read as a darker color. Uh, when you do this though the only um, concern I would have is that you might end up having um, the computer bogged down a little bit for you. So either shaded or hidden line end up, ends up working really well for you. So here, like I said, I've got my, get back to my architecture, my mullion, I've got my two and a half by eight, and now I can click and it will place that mullion inside the wall. And so therefore, and I would continue that exercise all the way down. And then once you, uh, finish up this, you can now start to work on the side elevations. They're again kind of evenly um, spaced. Uh, there again you have the same horizontal height. We'd have the same thing on the other side. If I were to rotate the model. And actually this is an exercise if you needed to add that horizontal grid. It's kind of referencing 11 foot 8 on the other side. Now I'm able to place those horizontal um, grid lines in. Now the one thing I wanted to kind of point out is as we're going through, um, the curtain wall is now starting to have all these components in it so it becomes a little bit more difficult to edit. Now one of the things I want to do is take out, there is a glass pane here actually and if I were to do this to shaded you can see that the glass is inside this opening which is uh, I had eliminated that vertical grid um, so that uh, you know this is one panel because I want to be able to take it out so what I would do is I'm going to go over here kind of on this panel and I'm going to hit my tab and you can see it's starting to highlight different things so now I've got that panel highlighted and I click on it back to hidden and so now it is highlighted so I want to modify this curtain wall now what I can do is see it's a system glazed panel if I go up here if I am going to want to make that empty empty system panel. So all the different ones, they have glazed, system panel, solid. See so if I wanted to put a solid in there, I could change it to a solid, but I want to change it to an empty. And then I am going to click off, and now that window pane is gone. So if the only way we could tell that is if I do a shaded and you can see that that window is now gone. So that's one of the things with regards to the curtain walls that allows us to, um, once you build it, you modify those panels. Now, 
the reality is that panel is not gone. If I go back up here again and tab on it, I can come up here and I can change it and I can put a glaze panel back in and it's back into the system. The other thing that I can do, um, you'll, you'll kind of learn this, is to, if we need to add components, um, that's, so for instance, I need to, uh, I decided that this wants to be a pair of doors going in there. I can go up here to insert, load family. Now when we go in here, so I want a pair of doors, I'm going to click on doors. I need to go and look for something that says curtain wall because all the other types of doors will, don't like going into the curtain wall. So here's a double door without a frame, glass. Um, there's a single door. And then here is a double door with a frame around it. So I'll just pick this one. And that will insert into the families. So now when I come over here and select, and there again, kind of putting my mouse over hitting the tab button until I get what I want. And then, now if I go over here, well, hang on a minute. I lost, I missed my connection here. Let's get this again. I go up here to look in the families, I will find my double door. So I add that, and now I have a double door in that opening in the curtain wall. So what you're going to find, and we're going to go th as we go through the, the, the semester, you'll realize that curtain wall allows you to come in here. Once you put a grid in place, that you can change it from metal to glass, to door openings, to other kinds of openings. So curtain wall ends up being a very um, nice tool within Revit to be able to utilize. So we are going to um, f stop here. So I just wanted to make sure that um, all the things that are associated with kind of curtain wall, um, I think placing panels, taking panels out, um, adding grid, and then of course putting the sheet in in the beginning are kind of the fundamental um, components that you need and then I'll just plan on working with you in class as you work through um, these different uh, components. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you.